so far. Why don't we all just stand in the classrooms and in the chapel and go ahead and worship. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the Hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, I 
opportunity just to be here and as a collective school in this combined chapel, Lord, 
we thank you for the technology and for the abilities you've given us and our people to just worship you, Lord. I thank you for today, and I pray over the chapel speaker, Lord. Move through them, Lord. Let us hear your word through them. In your name, amen. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Good to see everybody in chapel today. Good to be in chapel today. Thank you for praise team. Our praise team does an awesome job. I've been to some churches before where I think our praise team outshines them. So you guys did a fantastic job, as always. Thank you for our praise team. And we even had Aiden at the piano this morning. Where's Aiden? Where did he go? Thank you, Aiden. Yeah, he deserves a little bit of applause, doesn't he? All right. Well, it's been a great morning here at GCA, hasn't it? Everyone tests and quizzes going well, and uh, oh my, I heard some moaning there. Anyhow, I'm glad you guys are all here and you're doing well. Uh, thank you for Lord has blessed us. We are in good health for the most part, and that's great. Uh, I know some schools that are having a much more difficult time than we are. But uh, we're, in, we're in great hands here at GCA, and we want to thank the Lord for that. Well, let's pray before we get started today. As you may have guessed by now, I am your chapel speaker today. Yeah, right. See, everyone who just applauded, they're probably in trouble, and they know they have to see me at some point today. So they're trying to be, they're trying to be nice so that they can uh, uh, be on my good side. Well, let's pray, first of all. Father, I want to thank you for this time that we can come together, and Lord, that we set this time aside to focus on you and to focus on what you've done for us and to focus how you take care of us on a daily basis. Lord, we are very, very blessed. Uh, Lord, I pray that our faith would be strengthened through these difficult days. Uh, Lord, I pray that our eyes would stay focused on you. Lord, not just our physical eyes, but the eyes of our heart, the eyes of our soul, would be focused on you. Lord, you are the only order for me. But I do like that tea that they make, the the medicine ball tea. Isn't that good? Anyone like that? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm hitting a thousand, batting a thousand here today. Anyhow, so one day late, happy National Coffee Day. Now, the other special event that took place yesterday, some of you may have watched that on TV last night. It was our first presidential debate for the 2020 election. And uh, how many of you did watch? Gentleman, David Dillard, uh, took on a special project. And what he wanted to do was take his young architects that worked with him, and he put them all in pajamas for the night, took them to a nursing home facility, and had them spend the night there. And what he did was really interesting. At least I thought it was interesting. I know, like I said, you guys are going to be on the edge of your seats before this is over. But he did some things with them. He had them spend the night in the facility. And doesn't it sound interesting to spend the night in a nursing home facility? Yeah, yeah. Augie's already he's already into it. Uh, but this is some of the, these are some of the things that he had them do. He had them. If I can figure out how to operate this thing. There we go. These are some of the things that he had them do. First of all, I had them tape some of their fingers together. What do you think he did that? Old people don't, they're not always very mobile with their hands. They have arthritis and they have other problems. So, you know, if you've ever been at your grandmother's house and she asks you to open a jar of pickles or something, it's because they can't grip well, okay? Or maybe your parents ask you to do that. He had them wear earplugs. Now, not so that they were completely deaf, but so that they couldn't hear well. All right. He also had them wear each other's glasses. Now, if you wear glasses in here or you wear contacts, but you wear someone else's prescription glasses, it's not a good situation. You don't see well. You may not be able to see very far. Images may be blurry. But his reason for that was because the patients in the nursing home don't see well. Some of them have you know, really bad vision. Some of them may be legally blind, but he had a reason for all the things that he were doing. He was doing. A couple of the other things that he did. 
Okay, everyone, almost everyone was in a wheelchair. And as you know, uh, you know, that greatly limits your mobility. There we go. Okay, he was had them use wheelchairs. Sorry, I'm doing the best I can, Luca, give me a break. He had them use wheelchairs. He also had them, for some of them, use one side of your body because as we get older, you may have a stroke and you may be paralyzed on one side. Your right side may be paralyzed, your left side may be paralyzed. But this was the, this was the result of what happened. After they spent the night in the facility, they saw things in a different way. They saw, well, some of them didn't see things because they probably couldn't see well but they saw things that they'd never thought about. They heard things they'd never thought about. They felt things that they'd never thought about. And what Mr. Dillard said is at the end of the night, when they all met together the next morning to discuss, okay, how can we build a facility that will meet the needs of older people who have impairments or ailments or illnesses or whatever? He said that these 27-year-olds that didn't really want to be a part of this study uh, they did amazingly well. They had a greater understanding for elderly patients. They had a greater understanding of what they have to go through on a daily basis, things that we take for granted. And the author of the article that, uh, that I read in the Daily Bread and then read farther online was really interesting. They compared this study to what Jesus did for us when he came to earth. The whole reason that he came to minister to us, to, uh, to set examples for us, to teach us, and ultimately to die for us was to find out who we were, how we felt, how we lived our lives. And uh, our Savior did that because of his great love for us. It wasn't easy for him. You think about it. Let's say that you live in a, a great house okay you have a huge house you have servants to take care of everything and then you move into a slum wouldn't be a pleasant experience and that's a, that's very similar to what the lord did for us he left heaven and all of the the riches the fact that he, he was there with his father the fact that he was there uh and had everything that he ever needed and came to earth to live with us uh, was a very difficult thing for him, but he did it out of love for us. And the neat thing about what Jesus did for us is he experienced everything that we experience on a daily basis. Uh, we might start off the day and you're anxious because you may have a test today or a quiz today, or you may have a project that's due today. He understood anxiety. He understood sadness. Uh, and I listed just a few of the things here that he felt for us. He was angry, and everyone remembers the story of Jesus in the temple and how he overturned the tables there of, he called them the money changers, the people that were taking advantage of the poor people in the temple. He was sad when he had, when he heard the news about Lazarus and that he had died and how it left his mother probably without an income. So he was sad when he heard that. He was betrayed by Judas and also by Peter if you remember the last night, uh, or after the, after the uh, Last Supper, uh, he predicted that Peter would deny him three times before the crucifixion, and, he, and it did happen. So he was betrayed. He understood betrayal. He understood disappointment. He understood most everything. I shouldn't say most everything. He understood everything that we experience ourselves. Uh, the greatest thing, though, that Jesus did for us was his love for us. The greatest thing that he showed toward us was his love for us. And I love Romans 5, 6, and it says, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, in other words, we couldn't get our mess cleaned up. We couldn't do anything to prepare ourselves for salvation. We have to wholly and totally trust in what the Lord is doing for us. Uh, and that was part of the love that he shared with us. I've got to watch my time here. Okay. Not only did he die for us, but he wants to have a relationship for us. I think I might have gone too far. There we go. He wants to have a relationship with us. And what I want to focus on this morning, and don't have much time left, is what type of relationship is the Lord looking for for us? What should we be looking for for him? 
and a lot of us, we're relationship people. We, we want to develop a relationship. Some of you in here are in a dating relationship. Some of you have a great relationship with your siblings. Some of you don't have a great relationship with your siblings. Some of you have a great relationship with your parents, uh, maybe with grandparents or aunts and uncles, whoever is helping to raise you. And Jesus wants a very special relationship with us. He wants a relationship where we confide in him, where we talk to him as if he were a good friend of ours. He wants to communicate with us. He wants us to communicate to him. Uh, a lot of times when I'm praying, it's, I almost feel like sometimes I get a little too comfortable. Like I talk to him like I would talk to one of you all. Like I share my feelings. I share my concerns. I share my burdens. I think that's what he wants from us. I think he wants us to be very real and very open with him. Um, the thing that concerns me most or the thing that I'm not even sure where I am now, but the thing that he wants from us is a, um, all right, you're going to force me to do this guys. I have to put my glasses on. Okay. I know, I know. All right, there we go. The reason he wants us to have a relationship with him is because of what he did as far as salvation goes. He wanted to come to earth to die for each one of us so that we can have a home with him. He wants that special type of relationship. Uh, your parents, once you move out of the house, they don't want you to stop communicating with them. They want you to keep communicating. Some of your seniors, you're getting real close to that. You're going to be going off to school next year if you pass your senior year. Just kidding. But you'll be going off to school next year, and you'll be spending less time with mom and dad. But they still want you to keep that relationship strong. They still want you to communicate. If you stop communicating with your mom and dad when you're away at college, you're going to think something's wrong. And it's the same thing with our Lord. When we stop communicating with him, we stop praying, we stop reading, we stop spending time in, our, in the word. He wants to know what's wrong, and something is wrong. We've got to work on that relationship. It doesn't just happen. But to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, there has to be a time when you realize, hey, I'm a sinner. I need salvation. I need some help here. I can't do this on my own. I heard a great message the other day on faith, and uh, a lot of times we're told that Whenever you accept the Lord as your Savior and you start that road or that journey of faith, we have this idea that all of our problems are going to go away. Everything will be great. Um, I have important news for you. Problems don't go away. But with a faith, with a strong faith, we can handle those problems much better with his help than when we're alone. Um, so I want to leave you with this. Our challenge, what we focus on here at Greenbrier. Whenever I interview new parents, um, I always like to tell them that the most important thing that we focus on here is the faith of each of our students. Uh, you may be brand new here, and when I talk about faith, you may have no clue what I'm talking about. You may have been at Greenbrier for 10 years, 12, 11 years, 12 years, whatever, and you still may not have an idea what I'm talking about when I talk about faith, but it's a decision that each of us have to make. I had to make it at some point in my life. I'm looking back there at Mr. Wilson. He has a fantastic story of how he came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it wasn't until he was like in college, 18, 19, 20. Uh, but at some point in your life, guys, if you want to be successful, if you want to have that strong relationship, if you want to have a faith that is helpful and vibrant and growing, you have to make that decision first to trust to trust in Christ. And so I will leave you with that. I rambled a little bit this morning, but my main concern is this. Please know, please get to know the Jesus that we're talking about, the Jesus that you talk about in Bible class, the Jesus that we mention in chapel. Um, next week, we have Spiritual Emphasis Week. I believe it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, excuse me, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday we're off for fall break. So it would be nice to have that four-day break in there. I know we're all ready for that. But uh, it looks like as if we're going to have Daniel Etheridge back again this year. And he's bringing uh, a gentleman from his church, I think his name is Michael, to help with our music. So the Lord is preparing a great week next week for us. 
uh, some of you that have been here for a while, you know who Daniel is. You know what he's about. You know how fervently he loves the Lord. So I have uh, great expectations and great hope for what's going to happen next week. All right. Thank you, guys. Let's close in prayer and let you guys get on your way. Father, thank you so much for the time that we had to spend together today. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, Lord, that they will come to trust you. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for setting everything aside so that you could have a relationship with us. Thank you for the agonizing death on the cross that you experienced so that you could have a relationship with us. Bless each of these students as they go 